we speak wisdom amongst them that are mature. So they can understand the objectivity of truth from the subjectivity of our sentimental attachments. So we refuse to be distracted by the chaos. We refuse to be intimidated by the violence. We keep our gaze and our focus on the Lord and we align with the movements of the Spirit. Because we know that as we transit, everything happening around us will take just a command for it to nullify. That's how the realms were framed to function. So when you see a lot of chaos happening, sometimes it's an indication that the body of Christ is ready for another phase of transition. When you see chaos happening like this, sometimes it's an indication that able men and gatekeepers are lacking. It is the gates that are not kept, that are being exploited. So instead of just sitting down and crying, what we do is that we study within and to find out what to do in order to raise men that are able to stand in the gap. In order to keep the gates. And the moment the gates are kept, the white beast will go back. And so, to begin our journey tonight, I want to share with us briefly about the transitions of the spirit that are currently taking place in the realms of the spirit. And the responsibility of believers in keeping sync with that transition so that we can remain relevant as individuals and as a generation in the calendar of God. Of the many things that God has for mankind. And that's why you have seen many generations experience different dimensions of God. You have seen many seasons of God's dealings with humankind opened up for many generations. And it will not end. Even at the end of the dispensation of man, it will still not end. Because he can't be exhausted. The Bible said his ways are past finding out. However, in order for us to make the most of the allocated portion of God that is for our generation, there is a posture we must sustain, like you have mentioned. Because it is the posture of an individual that determines how much of God he can receive. Not the activity is engaged. You can come to church and pray with everybody and pray very loud. But if your heart is foul, the same glory that comes to bless the generation will resist you. Because God resists the proud, but he giveth more grace to the humble. So your posture becomes what determines what you will receive. And so when we step into a transition season like this, one thing we must learn to do is to look away from distraction. And to ensure that people are taught. So they understand the season where they are in the movement of the spirit. They understand the season where they are in the dealings of God. And they sustain the right heart posture. So that they will make the most of what God has to offer in that generation. Because all of us may start very vibrant. But in the next 40 years, when you look behind, you will find out that not too many people will align with that movement. That's why many times... When a new generation evolved, they point to people and say, these are fathers. When they started, they were not countable. They were many. But when they served God according to their dispensation, at the end of their generation, they become few. Because heart posture determines levels of transition. You may begin when God starts, but you may fall by the wayside. If you don't understand the disposition of the spirit that you must sustain in order to stay relevant. You may begin with God, pursuing him with the whole of your heart. But the moment transition begins to take place, a lot of things happen. And many cannot stand in the days when warriors are combating. In the days when men who can hold the heritage of God are counted, many times, too many are disqualified. So even the man teaching you today is talking with fear and trembling. Because that I teach it is not a guarantee that in the next 40 years, I will stand among the patriarchs. It will take continuous dealing. It will take continuous alignment and continuous yielding to sustain a posture that will qualify me for every graduation in the intensities of the glory that will be manifested. Yeah. 
about the transitions that are taking place and the specific transition that is taking place. First of all, we share with us three indicators that make us know that we are in a transition system. And then number two, I will share with us the things that happen in the transition season. Then I will begin to talk about the different transitions that individuals and the body of Christ will go through before the dispensation of man is ended. Because when we say transition, we are not just talking because we feel like talking. There are marks that shows that God wants to begin a new move. One of the first indicators that a transition is beginning to take place is the fact that gatekeepers have someone home. The Bible says when David sat God, sat his generation, according to the will of the Father, he rested. So when fathers who have kept the gate over a season and a dispensation finish their assignment, God begins to call them home. When God begins to call them home, God begins to look for new functionaries. So every time you look upon the landscape and strategic individuals that have kept the gates of God are beginning to go home, even if you don't hear the sounds in the spirit, know that a new spirit is about to open. Because when Moses is going, and a Joshua is to be anointed, then you know you are in a transition. A Moses brings the children of Israel out of Egypt, but a Joshua takes them to the promised land. They are different dispensations. So when Moses is going home, and a Joshua is coming on the scene, know that you are in a transition phase. That means the assignment of the departure from Egypt is coming to an end, and the new testimonies of God that will come will be about the promised land. So the assignment of Joshua it's not the signs and wonders required to shut down the government of Pharaoh. The assignment of Joshua is on how to allocate the land to the different tribes of Israel. The assignment of Joshua is how to contend with the kings that will resist them from entering the promised land. Whereas, the assignment of Moses is to bring down the king that kept them in captivity. To take them out of the land of captivity. The assignment of Joshua is different. Joshua doesn't know how to deal with Pharaoh. Because the job of Pharaoh is for another gatekeeper. It is a Moses that knows how to bring down Egypt with his staff because of the kind of encounter that he had. If you bring Joshua before Pharaoh, Pharaoh will lick him up. It will take a Moses to take Egypt and to bring down Pharaoh. But you will need a Joshua to take them into the promised land. So when you see fathers beginning to leave the scene and God begin to raise new voices, you know that a transition is by the corner. Now, if you are wise, you begin to put your heart together. Because when God begins to choose men, there are no favoritism with God. Because when Samuel came, he looked upon Eliab. Everything about him suggested that he was the Lord's anointed. But God said, I have refused him. He said, man, look upon the outward, but God looks at the heart. So when you notice a transition is taking place, it's a time for heart surgery. Because you may not be educated, but you may be the one that God has chosen. And many times, the people that think that they are supposed to be the one, they will further disqualify themselves with their pride and arrogance. And they will begin to fight the people that God is working with. Because they are loftiness. They assume because they are educated and they are eloquent. They assume because they know how church activity is carried out. They must be the one God will choose. And when they walk out, God will say, I have refused it. So in order not to be refused, what you do in a transition season is to check your heart. Because you say, I the Lord, I test the heart and I try the reins to give to every man as his way should be. So the first indicator for transition is the departure 
of warriors. The departure of patriarchs. The departure of gatekeepers who kept the heritage of God over a generation or a dispensation. When their time come, like David, they will rest with the fathers because they have served their generation according to the will of God. The second indication that there is a transition is that God brings new manner. The testimonies of God will begin to change. You know, when you hear, <laughs> Jesus need to help us this evening. When God begins to bring new bread, then you know that Israel needs to be fed with another manner. Because stamina will be required. Because when you are in Egypt, you will eat garlic. But when you enter the promised land, you will not find garlic there. Because you can't survive on garlic. Garlic may have a good taste and a good smell. You may even desire it. But you see, you need angel's bread to walk through the wilderness. Garlic will no longer be enough. So God will change the bread. So before now, when people gather in their number, God is talking about prosperity. He wants to bless them. So everybody is saying amen. But you see, the era where we are now, that amen gospel will no longer suffice. Because God is raising soldiers. And when God is raising soldiers, the testimony of God is the testimony of death. So the message will change because a new manner will be required to strengthen your loins so that you are able to stand the day of battle. Whereas, out of Egypt, God needed one man with a staff. But when they are running through the land of Sihon, the king of the Amorites, when they are running through the territories of Bashan, they will need a thousand men to fight. So the thing that happened to one man in Horeb will happen to many people. So at that time, God bless you may not be enough. Beyond God bless you, you may go to the wilderness to learn the way of prayer and fasting. You will learn how to die to your desires. You will learn how to stay awake all night and to seek the face of him that dwells in the deep darkness. Because the God that will take you through the wilderness is a, is a consuming fire. So when the messages begin to change, when the bread begins to change, know that God is equipping people with a new testimony because of the pathway that they must follow.